Hello, good evening. Ah, it's definitely not a good day. I can say that much and um, I'm stressed. I'm tired and above all, I'm disappointed. Disappointed that the current sitting president campaigned on a transition and gave us hope that we were going to have a transition. A transition is moving from the Second Republic to the Third Republic. Well, for now, all hopes are dashed of a dawn of a Third Republic because without the instrument called a new constitution, the Third Republic can't be birthed. And as it stands right now, I can't see how a Third Republic will be birthed now against the election time. I want to remind the President that he was the salesman in chief that sold us a plan. The plan to not only boot Jame but fix the wrongs of the past. And fixing these wrongs, chief amongst them was a new constitution. Some will say the 1990, sorry, some will say that the, well, I think it's 97 constitution was a good constitution. Well, as good as it may be, it still have remnants of dictatorship and the best way is to just fold it and let it belong to the museum and the gallery for posterity, but not to be operationalized. So therefore, we collectively decided that we were going to come up with a new constitution. And this constitution was going to help us to usher in a dawn of a new day. Well, we might as well forget that for the time being. And the principal architects who kill this draft, I will say that I'll start with the president. I'll start with Ahmad N. Kaba's party. I'll start with PPP, the APRC, and the renegades that are runaway brides that formerly belonged to UDP. Well, you have dealt a severe blow not only to you, but the collective interests of this nation, all for the selfish, self-centered interests of a few. What a shame, and a shame it is. Gambia, we need to learn, learn that we need to realign our political interests going forward. The president and his team has clearly shown us where their interest lies. And their interest is not to rebuild the country, but to make sure they perpetuate power. Mr. President, you had a social contract with Gambians, and you told us you were going to stay for three years, Thereafter, you will organize an election. You reneged on that promise, which is a moral obligation, not a legal obligation. And we, the citizenry of this country, has allowed the Constitution to supersede the moral contract you have with us. That's fault one. Fault two, Mr. President, the draft that is just kicked out of the parliament could have given you 10 years. And you, principal architect, once again, told us when you were campaigning that term limits must be instituted in the Constitution. So with or without term limits, you would have served two terms. So it means either you didn't believe what you were selling us or power is too sweet, that two terms are not enough for you. Mr. President, it's a shocker but I think equally on your part is a kamikaze mission, it's a suicide mission. Suicide in the sense that what you have done will really, really have its repercussions and the consequences that are coming will be dire. Dire in the sense that people will not believe a word you tell them anymore. If nothing else, if you came out last night, make a release, support the draft, Maybe it would not have ended up this way, but maybe what happened is exactly what you wanted and you have gotten what you wanted. Remember the 1.8 million Gambians. 
who haven't gotten what they wanted from you. Remember the hopes and aspirations that we had on you to make sure we have a better Gambia. Remember the collective suffering we suffered to make sure we usher in a better Gambia. Remember the high hopes, the dreams we had, and all we rested on your shoulder without knowing you, Mr. President. You have buried us alive. And as a captain of a ship, you have left us at high sea to fend for ourselves. We fend for you, and that's why you are here today as president. We banked on you. We invested in you. We toiled for you. We sacrificed for you. And it's high time you sacrificed for Gambia. Gambia is a weeping mother because you and your team help aborted a baby that she was carrying today. You killed a baby and that baby is called our draft constitution. Without second thought, Mr. President. I'm no longer concerned about the people who voted at the parliament because they have shown us where their loyalty lies, not to country, but to an individual. See, for the longest, we have been trying to make sure we get rid of strong men and build strong institutions. And starting to build these strong institutions starts with having a solemn, sacred, and sacrosanct document that we all can believe in and believe it will guide all of us. It will protect all of us. It will be the alpha and omega of all actions taken by everyone who leaves or hails from this country we call the Gambia. But no. Some of you decided to take the shortcut. And the shortcut is to just have an election that will give you what you want. Mr. President, before you think of a second term, let alone a third term, think of this term and what's left of it to salvage what we had. But I think as Gambians, the time has come. We start a new transition. And the transition means we need to have political alliances who are going to come out and fight against the self-centered political banditry that's been orchestrated against us, we the people. I am calling on all peace-loving Gambians. I am calling on all conscious political parties to come together to make sure we start another campaign to boot discretion and abuse of authority, process, and power. That is what we saw today. It's a blatant, flagrant abuse meted out on the vulnerable Gambians who gave all to the very people who has ditched and abandoned us at high seas today. I've never been this disappointed. I've never been this hurt. I've never been this violated. I feel violated and violated by people I entrusted power to, violated by people I had hopes on, violated by people that I thought were going to be the change makers and the game changers of this country. Mr. President, you can't be a captain of a ship if you allow the ship to sail without a port of call. You can't be a captain of a ship if you decide to ditch the ship when the ship has a distress mayday call. And yes, this constitution being voted no by the parliament is a distress call. That the transition we have been working on is dead. Because you and I know that the 1997 has given some people immunity. So what's the use of the TRRC when some people can invoke their immunity based on the 1997 constitution? That in itself, the victims who suffered under Jamis' rule in itself would have been the reason why everyone today at the parliament to vote yes 
to make sure this new instrument of state call the draft constitution come into being. If nothing else, if nothing else, this constitution, this draft should have been effected and at least we go on a referendum to make sure that the people who are cling on, clinging on to their immunity based on the 1997 constitution would not have had that opportunity. See, Mr. President, being a head of state is one thing. Being an honorable Gambian is bigger than being a head of state. And being honorable is being true to your words, true to your deeds, and true to your promise or promises. You've made many a promises to us. Many a promises. I am a businessman. I am not a politician. So I will stay here for three years, organize elections, and move on. We have forgiven you for taking a U-turn to your moral contract with the Gambians. And we allowed our constitutional supremacy to prevail. Yes, it's your right. But equally, it's your honor, Mr. President, when you tell us something to do it. That's how we judge you. And on that note, you have failed us. Because you promised and you failed. And we allow the Constitution to give you a slack for the fail grade you came with us by saying something and doing something different. But morality and conscience and having that courage of conscience is something that is needed. And you need to, Mr. President, whenever you talk to Gambians, you talk with good faith. See, laws are good. Having protection on the law is good. But the better thing is to be honorable and let your word be your currency. Today, Mr. President, I'll tell you that your currency, which is your word, has devalued to its lowest ebb. Well, in my books, Nyang Jai. Because you have taken me for a fool and you have taken me for a long ride to the bush. We fought together. We supported you and we didn't expect much and all we wanted is a better Gambia for all. And that's why I am saying the death of collectivism is today because we've lost it. This transition has kaput. This transition has not only been derailed, it is dead. Forget all about the transitional instruments we have had, the TRRC and everything. We might as well forget all those things. What we need to worry about now, Gambians, I am, I'm telling you this, it's high time you all talk to your political leaders. Forget about the sitting president. Forget about this administration. Let's come together and restart, reset our country by having a political campaign to have a realistic, genuine transition that will usher in a dawn of a new day. We had a false start. We thought taking Jame out was the beginning of a transition. No. Taking Adam Abaro out of office will be the beginning of our transition because the transition has been compromised. Looking at the Jane Commission report, whereby we had animal farm, where some animals are more important than other, where people were named, and yet still they are heroes in today's Gambia. It means the transition we all yearn for has failed. That transition has been dead a long time ago, but we were hoping that a constitution would have sanitized some of the things that are inherent, and a constitution would have created strong instruments and strong pillars of state. But oh no, people want to stay on the same thing we complain and booted Jame out with. The same constitution we complained about and booted Jame out are the same things that people who suffered are now trying to champion. It's a shame. It's a travesty. And this is the worst thing that has happened to us as Gambians.
It's painful, man. This is just not life. We can't be fighting a whole generation. 22 years of jammy, another four years, 26. Our blood pressures are still up. Our expectations are dashed. We are still fighting just to survive. And when I say survive, I'm not talking about us, the individual, but the collective good, our society, to survive and have an equitable society with a good social contract. And Mr. President, you have denied us that opportunity by not coming out and speak up and speak against the people who wanted to vote no and support the very document that you campaigned on, that when I become president, we'll have a new constitution. Forget about the monies being spent on the constitution. That is secondary. The biggest issue is not having a constitution. The biggest issue, Mr. President, is leaving us at the high seas and ditching the boat called the transition. Transition basically is moving away from to something that is more permanent. But what have we moved away from? When, Mr. President, we are still on the 1997 Constitution and people didn't support it. And we know why they didn't support it. Selfish reasons. We set up commissions. And after setting up commissions, people were found wanting for graft. People were found wanting for corruption. And yet still, Mr. President, they're the blue-eyed boys of this administration. What a shame. What do we stand for? What do we take the citizenry for? Mr. President, this is not politics. This is nation building. Some of us are not politicians. We're not interested in the political space. But we are so much interested in building a nation because what we have suffered, I call myself the Arrested Development Generation. We were only 18, 17, 19 when Jame took over. And 22 to 23 years of our lives were spent without being productive. So we were hoping, Mr. President, you will be that catalyst for change. You will be that person who will give us what we have been denied. At least the tail end of our lifespan, my generation, we would have done something worthwhile for ourselves and country. You have denied me that right. And that's why every day I am speaking out and speaking up. I am sick and tired of being sick and tired because I know I deserve better. Rewind. If I was a Senegalese, 1994 to 2020 today, I would have been better off because opportunities would have been availed to me. We lost that. That's why I call my generation the Arrested Development Generation. And you were part of that generation too. So it, you are duty bound, Mr. President, to play ball and make this country great. It's your responsibility, Mr. President. And you have left us. And you have disappointed me. I'll talk for me on that disappointment bit. You have disappointed me because I had high hopes that you will help usher in a dawn of a new day. Well, the people who brutalize us are all over your system. In the police, in the army, in the cabinet. Mr. President, either you didn't believe in what we believed in when we fought together with you to elect you, or you were indifferent to the plight of the Gambian. Because if you were not indifferent to our plight, we would have been on the same frequency and what we are looking for will be what you are looking for. The vote today at the parliament is not a political vote. It's a coup d'etat against the people. Coup d'etat is not only change of government. Coup d'etat is denying people to effectively partake in the democratization process. And that is you have denied me a referendum. 
The parliamentarians have denied me a referendum. And I will come back to why you denying me a referendum. You should have been the one championing, advocating for this constitution. Because that's what you campaigned on. That's what you sold to Gambians. That's what you told Gambians that you wanted us to have. If it was so dear to your heart, you would have been running and doing the phone calls to make sure people do the right thing. You would have given out public speeches on this so that we know exactly what it meant to you. But self-preservation and self-perpetuation is more important than the building up of institutions and documents that will make Gambia great, that will make Gambia better, and that will make Gambia stronger, and that will advance the course of equity and equal under the law. That is what you have denied us today, Mr. President. And like I said, it's a painful ordeal, especially those who suffered on the jammy. How on earth can we have the seditious laws in our books? How on earth do we have these repressive media laws in our books? And yet still, Mr. President, and parliamentarians, you guys want us to keep that document. Everything we fought for to boot Jame out has gone back to zero. Zero, zero, zero. And that's not life. The life we want was to work hard after booting Jame to rebuild a nation and make our people proud. Make our ancestors in their graves proud. Make men like Solo Sandeng and Femi Peters proud. Made women like Nogo Njai and others who are suffering today proud. But no, Mr. President, we have failed all those people. We have failed the young ones. We have failed generations to come because we had a unique opportunity and a good value proposition to kickstart, reset, and build a new Gambia. But self-interest has superseded the collective interest. And today, we are suffering collectively. And you will suffer just like we will suffer because you're still in the boat that we are in Maybe we're in the side of the boat that the water is coming in, but sooner or later it will get to the hull and the mass, and it will capsize, and we will all collectively suffer. And that's what you should help avoid. I don't think it's late, Mr. President. Let's allow the bill to have a second tabling to be represented again, but this time around, Mr. President, if you believe in it, Go out and support the yes vote. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. So long as you're keeping quiet on this, we will take it to be that you are in favor of our suffering. You are in favor of our arrested development. You are in favor of our transition being lethargic, being sleepy, being arrested, and being stalled. That's not why we brought you into office. Equally, today's vote has shown that your office still happens to have an F grade as it relates to the social cohesion of this country. The vote today clearly manifests, clearly manifests Gambia voting on ethnic, Relig um, regional and also party lines. The vote today saw the whole of and whatever party, Hamad Bas party is, where they went. Unfortunately, we look at it as a fuller party. Unfortunately, Mr. President, that's a shame. PPP, same. APRC, same. What did it show? 
a fragmented country with a lot of anger on different sides, using their anger to punish the collective good. It means you didn't do a good job bringing in the country together. You inherited a broken country. You inherited a divided country. And don't divide the country further. Bring us together. That's what we need. We need to be brought together. And that's why I am saying the transition that we thought we had, it's not a transition, it's a false start. Because the most important thing in a transition is changing of instruments, reparations. How can we have reparations when some of the biggest culprits are still visibly in uniform? How can we have a transition when no one enablers that cost the state financially billions of dollars in favor of Jame are still blue eye boys and girls of this system. We failed, failed, failed. But when you go to bed tonight, Mr. President, and you put your head on that pillow, just recall your voice talking to Gambians, telling us what you want for us and how you're going to get what you want for us. Remember telling us that you'll get a constitution. Remember telling us you won't be here for long. Remember telling us the aggrieved will be given justice. I am here. I am an aggrieved Gambian. A Gambian that Yaya Jame bulldozed his house. It's four years today. Nothing has happened and I'm not complaining because I'm looking at the greater good. And the saddest bit, Mr. President, I wrote a letter to your Attorney General. It's been a year and a half, not even a reply. And I am just one of many victims. So the hope we had in your administration are all dashed because we thought you would have been the principal agent of change. You would have been the catalyst, that rocket that will propel the much needed change and you will be that impetus for the change we all wanted and yearned for. Mr. President, you have shown us that your personal interest supersedes the collective good. We are lost today. This is not a loss for any political party. This is a defeat for the Gambia. This is a defeat for progressiveness. This is a defeat for Gambia moving forward. And if you think a simple majority is to your interest, Mr. President, have a rethink. Have a rethink. You don't want to win an election with 19, 20% and you have 80% liking you and are angry with you. Your rule, your tenure will be hell. That's not what you want. And that's why I say you need consensus. And for you to have consensus, you need a compromise. For you to have a compromise, you need to come to the middle, Mr. President. I know you control people in the parliament. And if those people that you have control over were to do what we thought you would have advocated for them to vote yes, we would not have been here talking right now. And this is our pain. This is our suffering. It's like stabbing us. This is the greatest jamfa. Gambians have ever gone through. Yakarbutas. And when people like me talk, we don't talk on political lines. We talk on national lines. The interest of this nation is the only interest I see. The interest of this nation is all that Nyangjai wants. 
And there are many young guys, but they don't have the opportunity to voice it out, Mr. President. We were your fans. We were your advocates. We were your supporters. We were those bodies that did the bidding for you. Not because we knew you, but we invested our hopes and aspirations of a better day on you. And today, we went to the parliament to cash that check. And we were told we had insufficient funds because you didn't put forth the effort, the energy to support the investments we made in putting up that draft constitution. So when we went to the gallery at the parliament to cash it, we received a bounce check and we are asked to go out. We are now out in the open, Mr. President. How are you going to salvage us? How are you going to help us? Think of us, don't think of you. Think of Gambia. Think of where we got you from. It's a long way, Mr. President. A long way from Yarambamba to one marina parade. It's a privilege, it's not a right. It's a privilege we accorded to you because we had hopes, and I swear to God, we had hopes. We had hopes. What are we left with now? Shattered dreams. So our dreams have been deferred. And when dreams are deferred, people need to regroup. And right now, I am telling all conscientious Gambians, we need to regroup to have a genuine transition because what we having right now is not a transition. It's an arrangement to perpetuate an individual. We thought we were going to have an arrangement to create socio-political and economic plurality and dividend for the Gambians so that we will have a better social contract, stronger institutions and weaker men and women. But no, what we are left with are the crumbs to fend for ourselves, regroup and kickstart, hope that after this election we will have a genuine transition, a transition that is inclusive, a transition that is fair for all, and a transition that is not punitive, but a transition to fix the wrongs of the past. A lot of Gambians feel alienated. They might have been close to Jame, but equally they are victims of Jame. Mr. President, come out and bring our diverse people together. We are living in a divided nation without a sense of direction, a unity of purpose, and a reason for being a state. With this in mind, Mr. President, we are bound to fail. So now it's your duty for whatever is left of your term, be it 13 months, to nurture a Gambia that is inclusive, to nurture a Gambia that thinks Gambia first, not you or any other Gambian. If you do so, maybe, and then only maybe, we may be able to forgive the transgression meted out against us and the shattered dreams we had of this transition. Sorry, Gambians, that I'm boring you this evening, but I'm not only disappointed, I'm hurt. I invested a lot of emotions, energy, to make sure we got rid of Jame. But this is not what I bargained for, and most of us, this is not what we bargained for. We need help. So, Mr. President, try and help us. Let us not be political, let us be nationalistic at this point in time. Gambia is thinking and wanting his, her sons and daughters to come together to work for a common good. And that's why it's a transition. In a transition, all hands must be on deck. 
And the deck that you are putting your hands on, Mr. President, is just for you. It's not for me. The deck I want you to put your hand on is a deck that sees every Gambian as a winner. And after the transition, Golo Golo bought Saddam. Fula ne gadem, lula ne gadef. Think of us. No longer, Mr. President, you cannot be an advocate of term limits because you don't believe in term limits. Forget about law. We're not even talking about the retroactive nature of what people have been calling for in the draft. Your courage of conviction and your moral compass should tell you that you should not serve more than two terms. But the mere fact that you want a third term without even finishing your first term thing says a lot, Mr. President. You fooled us or we are just stupid. Well, Gambians, it's not a great evening, so I can't tell you to have a great evening. But let's come together, let's regroup, and let's make sure post-election 2021, we come up with a real transition to fix this country. Some of us have taken time out of a lot of other things we could have been doing to focus on country to focus on steering country, to focus on advocating for country. It's not that we are idle. We put Gambia first. And we expect people who are in the driver's seat to not only put Gambia first, but steer Gambia where Gambia ought to be. On that note, let us all have a somber reflection tonight. My energy is so low today. My emotions are at its lowest ebb. And I feel raped. I feel abused. I feel cheated. I feel hoodwinked. I feel taken for a ride by the very people that I supported, by the very people I helped put in power, by the very people I rest all my hopes and aspirations of a better day. Good night, Gambia. And I do hope the people who voted no today and supported no under the table, influential people, the politicians who were doing the phones and doing the runs and the rounds to make sure that they perform an illegal abortion on our baby draft constitution. May God pay you for your deeds against the greater good. May the wrath of hell be on anybody who took this country for a ride. God bless the patriots of this country. God bless all well-meaning Gambians and make sure that let us all make sure we have our eyes open, put it on the price and make sure we effect a meaningful change that will give us a genuine transition to change our country once and for all so that our kids will be proud to say that our parents are not lethargic our parents were not indifferent. They have done all they could to make Gambia a better country. God bless you all. For the Gambia, I, Nyang Jai, will remain ever true. Thank you so much.